Why not? Do 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 do. Dun, 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 dun. It's like, what? You're early. I know. I'm early. I'm early. Got it. Um, share that. Do, 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 do. I don't need closed captions on my own thing. <laughs> I don't need that. Howdy. Let's see. We got that. We got the clock. Hey, Kath. Uh, I got a bunch of notes. I have, like, pages of just guests and ministries and crazy. I was going back, all the way back to... Uh, 2011 when I was sending out emails about the show 2011 February 2011 uh, which is when I started up daily so I mean I just kept going through them and I'm like oh my goodness <laughs> it's hey Vance it's pretty overwhelming to see all this stuff and then I was figuring out uh, Facebook reach just over the last three years and then the podcast which has been going um, for, I think, 2015, like seven years, something like that, I think seven years in the podcast. So I've got stats from that, 1,800 episodes on the podcast, 590,000 show downloads. And 82% of them, uh, of the people, of those downloads, people listen to at least 75% of the whole episode, which is crazy, I didn't know that. And then what countries people get the podcast from. And then radio. Did some numbers for radio. And then I got this big list of guests and ministries that we've had on the show and featured over the years. That was a big eye-opener. I'm like, whoa. Because, you know, often I'm like, is this really making a difference? <laughs> like, what's the point of all this for 16 years? So uh, the answer is yes. And God's just been good. So. And then Clay calls me uh, just to share. And then Amelia and Caroline both sent me stuff. I'm like, you guys are killing me because uh, they put on Instagram and stuff. And Amelia used the theme music uh, Back in Black from the first Iron Man movie. Is it better to be feared or respected? And I say, is it too much to ask for both? So she did that. I put that on Facebook. And then Caroline did a post with some music, uh, Changes by David Bowie. I'm like, you guys are killing me. <laughs> so today's just gotten heavier and heavier and heavier. So I'll see how uh, much self-control we can muster to get through this. End of an era in terms of live radio, but not the end of a ministry, not the end of my life. Unless the Lord's got some plan I'm unaware of between now and when I get home this evening. Amelia's going to go get me a big old rack of ribs from Outback. Because that's what I usually give myself on Father's Day. So there's that. That's kind of funny. Hey, Rebecca. So I'll have that when I get home. And I've got my list of people to say thank you to. And uh, a bunch of stuff there. And uh, thanks, Joe. Amelia's texting me, have fun, fun, fun. I think this is fun. I think I'm funny. <laughs> so we'll see. I'm going to talk to radio here in a second. Hold on. All by myself. Winston Salem, knock knock. Hey Vince, how you doing? Good. How are you? Very good. Ready for the last show? I'm ready. All right. It's crazy, man. Okay, so uh, Dan Forrest should be calling in for the first segment. Okay. Assuming these friends of mine are reliable, <laughs> so he'll call in. Uh, he should be calling in 
in a couple of minutes before the show starts. And then Pastor J.D. Greer's calling in at the beginning of the second segment. Mm -hmm. And then Bob touched and I put it on the screen. He's on my board. Good friend. He's calling in at the beginning of the third segment right after the 430 break. And after Bob's done, just me. All righty. So we'll, uh, we'll see what's going on. All right. Thanks, bro. Appreciate your help. Thank you for your show. You bet. Merry Christmas. Hey, Jill. Jill up there driving in Oregon. You're like in Oregon. That's so uh, kind of you to tune in, Jill. Thank you. Tasha. Amen. I'll miss you too. It's different here on Facebook, right? We have a different, I have a different relationship with you guys than ra radios like this nebulous weird out there. You don't know what's going on. No, there's Dan Forrest calling in. Good. Perfect timing. Good job, Dan. That's cool. Uh, and we'll uh, reminisce. Got a bunch of different things to share. And uh, we'll see how it goes. People are like, Hi. hey, Patricia. People are like, how are you going to finish the show? I'm like, the same way I've always finished it. So Steve Noble and the Steve Noble Show. God willing, I'll talk to you again real soon. Like my dad always used to say, ever forward. But I'll do a little uh, blessing over you guys at the end. And I uh, got my thank you list. I got to get through that. There's a lot on there. A little charge to keep for everybody. And then I'll see you on uh, January 26th, which is uh, the plan for the first podcast, Friday the 26th. So we got to get the studio built out um, up in the down in the basement at our house, which is a finished room. So. And that's going to be fun. And of course, we got to, you know, we're raising some money for all this stuff. And, uh, to seed growing Noble U so that in a couple of years, Noble U will be completely self sustaining, which will be awesome. Looking forward to that. So, new season. It's really just a paring down of everything that's already going on, it's just a focusing. It's a focus. That's what's happening. Um, so in order to focus, you got to narrow, right? By definition, that's the deal. So we're just narrowing the focus. I've been a jack of all trades for a long time and we're, the, the highway is getting narrower, but the narrower you get something, the more power it generally has. So that's cool. So that's, uh, exciting. So there you go. We'll see what goes on. I can't even get out of my studio. They like came into the building today and they ripped up all the carpet down here in the hall. And then they were putting down some kind of resin or something underneath all of that. And I'm like, can I like go down to the bathroom? Can I get up? They're like, no. So I'm like, okay. I hope I can get out of here by 515 or so. Uh, depending on how I am at the end of the show uh, with you guys, uh, I'll probably just do a quick prayer and then out of here. And then I'll just probably spend a little time by myself here in the studio, shutting things down and head home, ready for Christmas and a break. And we're going out to Asheville on the 26th. My wife and I and our two daughters, the boys are married and got their other families. And so we're going to go out there to see the Biltmore. Joy to That'll the cool. world. I don't is this that. just a Christmas expression or does it apply to the new year, even after the holidays? Full commentary. That's the one minute more warning. When that happens, it's one minute till we go live. And you might have heard me say this before. We I actually go live at 4.05.50, which is where you get a 10 second delay. So it's 4.05.50 and then on the radio, the radio people all hear it at exactly 4.06. That's how they build in that little delay, the little delay between where you're broadcasting and then when they air it. So, you know, if I drop an F-bomb or something, which I'm not. <laughs> Than they can. <laughs> hey, Hayden Noble. Howdy, Steve Noble. Howdy, Hayden Noble. All right. I got to go turn the radio back up so I can hear this. Okay, Lord. Be ready. Dot com. Wake up, everyone. It's time for the Steve Noble Show.
where biblical Christianity meets the everyday issues of life in your home, at work, and even in politics. Steve is an ordinary man who believes in an extraordinary God. And on his show, there's plenty of grace and lots of truth, but no sacred cows. Call Steve now at 866-34-TRUTH. That's 866-34-TRUTH. Or check him out online at thestevenobleshow.com. And now, here's your host, Steve Noble. Well, I always knew this day would arrive. I didn't know when it would arrive, but I knew it would arrive sooner or later. Uh, In the Noble family, in my life, and in the Noble family, because they got dragged around because of it, uh, a lot of season changes. To me, this is a season change as we close out this season of the live radio show, which began on Saturdays in November of 2007. And then I got off the air after three years, and then they pulled me back in Godfather Part 3 style and went daily starting in February of 2011. So it's been uh, a bit of a run, 16 years. I've got a bunch of stats and stuff I'll go through, Facebook, podcast, radio. Earlier today, I was sifting through. I was going back through emails. We used to put out an email every day along with the Daily Dose, all the way back to February of 2011 when I went daily. Telling people, uh, you know, what was coming up. And I'm going through all these old shows. And for years, I've struggled with, uh, is this worth it? Is this making a dent? Is does, does is anybody listening? Uh, does this matter? And uh, <laughs> I'm going through this stuff going, wow, there's been a lot of content there. Okay, a lot of content. Uh, and I'll, I'll, pe- I'll unpack this more. Uh, but 3,536 shows have been aired since I started in November of 2007. So a lot there to think about and work through and praise God for. One of those shows uh, goes back to January 11th, 2012. January 11th, 2012, uh, this guy I had met at a luncheon with a bunch of kind of crazy Christian conservative wacko people. Uh, Never met him before, and he introduced himself, and his uh, name was, uh, and still is, Dan Forrest. And then Dan, on January 11, 2012, uh, was early on in his campaign to become our lieutenant governor. Of course, he won that race and served two terms, which was awesome. And so, Dan, great to hear your voice, buddy. Thanks for calling. How you doing? Merry Christmas. Well, Steve, thanks for having me on, and congratulations to uh, this new chapter in life. I'm excited for you and excited for Noble You and for all the people you're going to be reaching across this country. So, man, just let me say first and foremost, thanks for all you've done for all of these years on the radio. And unless you've done radio, uh, it is hard to imagine the amount of effort that you have to put into preparing for every single show, especially those three-hour shows and <laughs> i remember because i sat in on one for you one time and man i tell you i had the who's who from all the presidential candidates running at the time on uh, online and man I, it was still hard it was so hard so I, just man thank you for all the effort and all the sacrifice that you've uh put in through all these years you're welcome and and i will always laugh about that we'll be laughing about that in heaven one day uh because i roped dan into doing it i was doing now uh, when i got syndicated then the syndicated company uh had a couple of hosts drop out so for about six weeks i was doing three hours a day which for me was fun but for anybody else uh was torture like for dan and, and that was i mean you had an incredible lineup to fill every nook and cranny of that three hours but dan's like all right i'm never doing that again <laughs> and that was just i still I did, get a kick I out had- of that uh, I had a no show from uh, Ted Cruz, oh. and so I had 15 minutes of uh, blank time that I was supposed to fill saying something. I still don't know what I said, but you know, that, was, that was a long 15 minutes. <laughs> yeah, it's so funny. Well, uh, you've been a dear friend and a great encourager and a great supporter, and our, we were, we were, we've been in the trenches together in a lot of different ways, and homeschooling on a personal level, and, and just uh, God has been so gracious towards me to have friends like you. And hey, we're not done. we got a lot going on, and we'll continue to advance the kingdom as much as we can together. I love you, Dan Forrest. Thanks for calling. Absolutely, Steve. Good talking to you. All right, buddy. Merry Christmas. We'll talk later. That was uh, Dan Forrest. He, what a great uh, lieutenant governor he was, by the way. And he certainly was. And Dan, I, when I met him, I'm just like, hey, hey, hey I'm Steve Noble. Oh, I'm Dan Forrest. Hey, what are you doing? Well, he, he was an architect. And then uh, he was starting a little organization to kind of get into the culture war thing. And that's why I was at that luncheon. And 
And then, uh, you know, we became fast friends. I'm like, oh, you're you're running for lieutenant governor? And then the next thing you know, I have a, I have a, I have a, a dear brother in Christ and a friend, and I've taught a couple of his kids. And and uh, I'm like, wow, I, I have a friend that's lieutenant governor. That's pretty cool. And God's been doing crazy stuff like that for me ever since 2004 when Call to Action started. And it's just been a wild ride. So radio, uh, so just in case you don't know, if you're newer to the show. So radio started in November of 2007. I did three years on Saturdays, which was a big ask of my family. That's when it was called to action this week. Because it was just once a week. Now, when I uh, launched the new podcast at the end of January, it's, I'm going to be back to that once a week. Uh, which is going to seem pretty easy. But uh, so that was three years on Saturdays. And then I was really frustrated. It was uh, in 2010. We had started the radio show after the Harvest Crusade with Greg Laurie here in Raleigh in the summer of 2007. And I, I had hoped that God would sell my business, and all this other stuff. And I was super frustrated. So one of the most godly men who's had a huge impact on me asked me to go on a mission trip uh, in the fall of 2010 to Thailand. And I'm like, okay, I need to get out of here and go be quiet and see what the Lord wants to do. And I went to Thailand. I had a lot of time to myself, even though we were doing literal hut to hut bamboo evangelism and uh, and decided then I just felt a peace about it and prayed about it. And I'm like, OK, I don't really know what I'm supposed to be doing. So when I come back, I'm going to get off of everything. I, I canceled the radio show two weeks later and uh, we were on Sirius Satellite Radio and all that stuff. I was doing a bunch of men's ministry stuff. I canceled it all. And I'm like, OK, Lord, maybe you just want me to let's just do our homeschooling thing and I'll run my house painting company. And that if that's what you want me to do, that's fine. I just don't know what I should be doing. I was very frustrated. I said, okay, so I'm just going to go quiet. I had no contentment, so I was still teaching an adult Sunday school class and, and taught it. Uh, a, a buddy of mine took that over, Blair Davis, who's just a sweet, sweet, dear friend, one of my best friends. And he was teaching. I'm like, hey, hey, dude, can I, can I do a five-week class on contentment? Because I don't have any. And one of the best ways to learn something is to force yourself to go teach it. And so the, I, I went through that. Paul learned to be content. The apostle Paul had to learn it. So it's not that easy. And I learned a lot as I prepared for that. And then uh, once that's over, then my buddy Stu Epperson Jr. at Truth Radio calls me back. He's like, I got to get you back on the radio. And I'm like, yeah, dude, I don't know that I want to do that. This, that, and thing. What are you talking about? Because God kind of made me for it. And he goes, well, would you consider doing a daily show? I'm like, I got a business to run. Uh, and then God just worked it all out. So the daily show started in February of 2011. And then God up and sold my business on May 30th the same year and then brought Harvest Crusades and Greg Laurie and those guys around because we had a big hole in our income. And uh, God provides. And he's doing it again as we close the books on the radio show, launch the podcast, and expand Noble U. God's in charge, and I'm good with that. Uh, I hope you are as well. This is Steve Noble on The Steve Noble Show. We'll be right back. We live in Hold an on-demand on world. Time, weather, meals, and content. That's why the Truth Network... Just me in here. The monkey flips the switch. Just me. Thanks, Ralph. Hey, Ben. Uh, oh, Ann. <laughs> I'll be in tears. <laughs> That's kind of you. I'll be in tears. Leave the tears to me. I'll get to that. Yeah, so so that that's where, you know, I, and again, I, I look, I've got this list. I was, I was writing guests and ministries and things that have been on the show, and that was just a sampling, right? Because this is not. There's 3,536 radio shows. <laughs> How can you possibly? But it was healthy. It was really good for me and, and, and turned into a little worship session. And I just thank the Lord for all this. And I'm like, wow, this this actually happened? This Like all this stuff happened? And I can hear my dad saying, oh, good job, Stevie. You know, he wants me to take the credit. Uh, he gave God credit too, of course. But he always, like most parents, wants, wants to make sure you get plenty of that yourself. And I'm like, dad, it's... <laughs> I got nothing. I only have what God gives me and what he puts in there and, and to turn around and pour that out. And then I look at this and I'm like, wow, Lord, you did a lot. You did a lot. Deeply humbling. Oh, my goodness. It's so humbling. I'm like, I'm such a <laughs> I'm, – I'm, uh, I'm Saturday Night Live. We're not worthy. We're not worthy. We're not worthy. Right? Hey, Ryan. And I'm, that's how I feel about all this. I'm not worthy. But but God is good. And these guys out screaming in the hallway. All these Hispanic guys out there dealing with the carpet, and I can't even walk out of the hall, <laughs> which is a bummer. I'm like, I'm going to need to go to the bathroom. 
okay, that's going to have to wait. Fine, whatever. So I'll go through the radio stuff. And, and these numbers are wild and what countries from the podcast and Facebook Live. And, and with Facebook Live, I'm just looking at the last three years. I couldn't access information before that. So these are huge, crazy numbers. And then the podcast itself. And then, uh, and then uh, we'll talk to, uh, let's see if JD calls in. He's a busy dude. So hopefully he'll be calling in. And we can talk to JD Greer for a couple of minutes, the Summit Church. The first time I interviewed him. Uh, December 12th, 12-12-2012. Ooh, numerology must mean something. So, pretty funny. 12-12-2012. Like, is that a song? What do we do with that? Uh, the answer is nothing. Just praise the Lord. And I actually met JD in uh, sometime in 2006. So we've known each other for 17 years, which is crazy. He probably won't remember that. But like I said, he's a big fish in, in, in the evangelical world, in the Southern Baptist world. And, uh, and you know, he's just another one of these people. And I introduced him to Greg Laurie. And I'm like, I, just, I could tell you a bunch of stories and stuff like that. And I'm like, hey, hey man, I just, I, I can be involved and introduce people. And I get to touch stuff like that at all. I'm like, wow, that's crazy. It makes it just I, I, I'm in a constant state of shock that. Uh, thanks, Rob, that. Uh, I well, God's allowed me to do any of this stuff because I'm definitely not worthy. And he gets all the glory. That's the deal. Uh, first of all, he, he can only work with broken tools. That's all of us. So what choice does he have? And then that's, you know, Psalm 51, David's Psalm of repentance has always loomed on me as I've struggled with my own sin over the years. And, and, uh, my sin is ever before me. Not, 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 I owe, I owe, so off to work, I go condemned kind of way. Condemnation is, is the devil's ploy. He condemns you. The Holy Spirit convicts you, picks you up, dusts you off, gets you back in the game. Condemnation is of the devil. You suck. You call yourself a Christian. If they knew what I knew, nobody would listen to you, but that's all condemnation. But you got to wrestle with that, and I have over the years. And and I'm like, okay, I got to I got to listen for my, the voice of my father. My sheep hear my voice. Jesus said, and I know his voice. And I, and I know, well, goodbye, Peyton. It's see you later. The podcast will be back. But yeah, we won't be doing the live thing anymore. But we'll still be there, and people can always email me, and I'll I'll put that out there on the podcast. And I'm excited about that. All right, hold on. In his name. Oh, what an appropriate song. My parents are in heaven, probably dancing. Hey, look, Mom, I made it. Three years on Saturdays, 13 years on the weekdays. That's 3,536 radio shows. Which is crazy, and I'll get to some Facebook Live stuff and the reach there. 2.6 million people uh, viewed our posts on, on the radio show page in the uh, last, that's just the last three years. And Facebook Live, because we do that with the show, and many of you are, are on Facebook Live right now. Uh, in the last three years, that's 1.9 million minutes viewed, and all kinds of crazy stuff. <laughs> it's like 54,000 35-minute sermons. Uh, but I was talking to Dan Forrest, and he was all the way back on January 11, 2012. Uh, J.D. Greer, who happens to be not only a friend, but my pastor. The first time I interviewed J.D., this is interesting. If you're into numerology, I'm not. Uh, December 12th, 2012 is the first time I had Pastor J.D. Greer from the Summit Church on the radio show. We met all the way back in 2006. J.D., how you doing, buddy? Merry Christmas. Man, Merry Christmas to you, first of all. Congratulations. Second of all, when you throw out those stats that way, I feel like, man, I thought I was long-winded. You just, <laughs> you just, they just put you up and you're the energizer buzzy. You just gone and gone and gone. Yeah, well, yeah, I mean, and, uh, crazy people tend to gravitate towards one another. I, I think the first time we <laughs> met was in 2006. Uh, Stu Epperson Jr. was roping you into the Harvest yep. Crusade stuff. We were at some restaurant in downtown Durham or Chapel Hill or something, and he's like, oh, you got to meet this guy. I'm like, yeah, yeah, okay, J.D. Greer. How do you spell that? 
Uh, and and there, so that's a 17 year friendship that we've had, which has just been Man. great. I know my wife always says, she's like, Hey, be careful. Cause you can't make new old friends. And that's, <laughs> that's definitely true. And it's been true of you, man. I just, I can't tell you how many times, I mean, not being on the show, but listening to it, um, just the way that you interact, the gospel richness, uh, that you're not afraid to ask the hard questions, you know, that whole sacred cow thing. When I first, you know, kind of started to interact with you, I'm like, that. I don't know of a more metaphor for him to use. Because he just is like, hey, we're just going to talk about it. Yeah. Uh, you don't talk about it, we're going to talk about it. And, and it's it's been awesome, man. Yeah, and it's been, uh, you know, you, you, you know what it's like better than most for, for God to do things in and through you and to sit back and watch what what he's capable of and, and there's only there's only so much we can do and then everything else is him and and it's just a it's a deeply humbling thing and, and the fact that I've been able to have friends like you over the years and iron sharpening iron and and just uh, to, just to kind of labor together throw our, our shoulders to the same plow has just been such a great uh, privilege yeah. and honor I know you told me not to call in and uh, and 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 praise you, which uh, which is what I'm not doing. But I'm gonna have to do it anyway, just a little bit. One of the things I've really appreciated about this, and I think longtime listeners to your show will recognize this, is that you're not afraid to wrestle with things and change your mind on stuff. Mm -hmm. I, I don't mean major stuff. It's not like you're, you know, rethinking key doctrines or yeah. you know really your kind of biblical, uh, you know, centrality or anything like that. But just you know, I remember one of our first conversations is like, you know, you said, hey, I'm, you know, I used to talk about things this way, but but the more that I've kind of interacted with, with Jesus and the spirit of the gospel, I feel like this is probably the, the right thing for us right now. And I feel like that kind of humility just speaks, you know, just speaks volume because it shows that this is not just a performance for you. It's, yeah. it's something that really what you're giving us and what you have given us for these last what 13 years is just the overflow of the things that you were learning and discovering. Mm -hmm. And man, I, I like listening to you because you're smart, you're funny, you're witty, you're quick. I think what ministers to me is that I just, I'm, I'm drinking of this fountain of living water that, that the Holy Spirit is doing in you. And mm -hmm. so I think I'm speaking on behalf of a law uh, on behalf of a lot of us to say that, that um, our walk with God is better and smarter and funnier and less boring because you've been in it. <laughs> well, that's uh, incredibly kind of you to say, and I, I value your input. I value your friendship, <clears throat> and 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 you've had a huge impact on me as well, and continue to every Sunday when when you're preaching the word and bringing the message. So God bless you, brother. I love you. Thank you so much for your friendship, and uh, thank you so much you too, for calling. Man. All right, pal. Love you, love you, Steve, and pray for us this weekend. We you know we got our that's right. Of deep back stuff. That's going to be a lot of people epic. coming so, out. I'll look forward to seeing you. Amen. All right, man. All right thanks, God. pal. God bless. All right. See ya. Uh, Pastor J.D. Greer of the Summit Church. Seeing that kind of stuff, I'm like, come on, man. <laughs> and that's where I had a conversation earlier today, this morning with a dear brother. And I'm like, you know what I long for is just, it's just just this kind of rough in the dirt, open, open, honest, transparent Christianity where we have this little thing at home. Uh, it's on a bookshelf somewhere or in a bathroom. I can't remember where. It just says, it's this little thing. It just says, as far as anybody knows, we're a nice, normal family, which is a lie about every single family in existence, right? Going all the way back to the garden. As, 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 as far as anybody knows, we're a nice, normal family. No, there, there's no such thing. And as far as, and, and as, far as anybody knows, uh, I, I'm, I'm a super awesome, uh, grounded Christian. Well, that's not true about any of us either. We're all just, you know, we have our moments, you have your mountaintops, you have your valleys, you're limping along. And, and I just, uh, I, I've seen the value of honesty and repentance and forgiveness and just this Jesus down walking around with these guys for three years. No pretense, playing no games. And, and that's the way it's supposed to be. And God just in his wisdom and in his kindness uh, has been able to get me there with a mic in front of me and to be able to share that stuff. So Facebook Live, for those of you on Facebook Live and everybody else. <clears throat> yeah, so I mentioned that 2,641,409 people have viewed uh, the Facebook uh, posts from our Facebook page, the radio show page. Facebook Live, 1.9 million minutes viewed. 
Uh, 104,000 reactions, comments, shares. 50, it's like 54,000 35-minute sermons. That's what 1.9 million minutes viewed <laughs> turns out to be. And 554,000 were complete views, which means they watch 95% of the video, which is shocking to me. Then there's the podcast. So we're going to launch the podcast, uh, the Steve Noble Show podcast, which will be new and improved and expanded at the end of January. So if you want to get on that email list, just text Steve to 66866. Text Steve to 66866 or go to the website, the Steve stevenobleshow.com and you can sign up there. Just get the daily dose, sign up, and then you'll be in. So the podcast, uh, we've put 1,800 episodes out there, uh, 590,000 show listens and downloads of those episodes. Uh, this was shocking. 82% of them listened to at least 75% of the episodes. So that would tell me that they liked what they were hearing early on. Of course, America is the leading country for the podcast. Uh, um, the vast majority. You, number two, this was wild, is Japan, a very dark place. Uh, 18,242 downloads from Japan. And then France, Germany, Canada, the UK, Brazil, Australia, Kenya, Mexico. And then check this out. God takes uh, everything that you and I have done together. Uh, he, got, he got the podcast to China, Iraq, United Arab Emirates, Pakistan, Saudi Arabia, and last but not least, Iran. Isn't that wild? It's just wild to me. And, and only God, only God could do that. And then I was thinking on, on the radio. So three years on Saturdays, that was 156 shows. 13 years uh, on weekdays, including today, 3,380 shows. 3,536 shows uh, have aired. And I've always wondered, is anybody listening other than me? So let's say you do 3,536 3, shows, which we have. And if it was just 10 people per show, it's 35,000 people. 100 people per show, 353,000 people. If it's 1,000 people per show, 3.5 million. If it's 5,000 people per show that was reached, that's 17.6 million. 50% uh, more than the population of North Carolina. Is that what happened? I don't know. Maybe the Lord will show me one day. Shows me enough to keep me going, not so much that I get puffed up. This is Steve Noble on The Steve Noble Show. We'll be right back. Okay, I'll be right there, guys. Hey, oh, Dad, come on in. I thought you were the radon test guys. The who test guy? Isn't that crazy? That stuff's crazy to me. Hey, Linton. Thanks, bro. You were on a long time ago. Uh, Linton once referred to me as the Brillo pad of the body of Christ. <laughs> I don't know if you remember that, Linton. Hilarious. There's another one, the hammer of truth. I used to think being a velvet hammer, a, a Christian activist here locally and statewide told me it early on, 2004. Steve, you need to be a, a velvet hammer. And I was like, you're a wimp. That was me in 2004, 2005. But now I understand. A velvet hammer, that's truth and grace. That's what that is. Flying solo today. That's right, Hayden. Josh is uh, out of town with his family. So I kind of started by myself and here I am finishing by myself. So it's, it's fine. Yeah. I just had somebody, Kath, uh, ask me about that. <laughs> like in the last two weeks, somebody emailed me, Hey, you know, you, you did that show with your sister about, uh, uh, d dealing with your parents' estate. Do you still have those notes? And I'm like, yeah, I sent it to you. Thanks, Patricia. Hey, Steven Walker, Angie. Hello. Hello, everybody. Noah. Thanks, man. Got a big list of helpers in the background. I'll, uh, get to them here in a little bit. All right, now you're going to have two criers on the phone or on the air. Me, I'm a crier. I don't know if you knew that. I just asked my family. I'm like Mr. Captain Emo, that's me. And then uh, Bob Touchton, who was my board chair for several years, still on the board, just a dear friend. So he's calling in on behalf of the board. So <clears throat> he better not lose it. If he loses it, that's not going to go well. <laughs> then I'll tell you the story of the very first day when I did the radio show because it was classic call to action, Steve Noble start. And then I'm going to go through this list. I'll, I'll speed read through the list. Just different, just different ministries that have been on the show and uh, different individuals. And I mean, I, I just was going through it earlier today, all the way back to 2011. And I was like, man, what a ride. I'm just so great. I said it yesterday. I'm, I feel like I always feel like I'm just a spoiled brat. I, you know, I stumble all the time. I struggle with things. 
some things for years, decades even. And and I'm like, I, you know, that's why Psalm 51 is always there. My sin is ever before me. And then Satan wants to take that and bludgeon you with it. And and God just uh, brings me back to the cross and back to my salvation. And it's a celebration. I, I, I know his, my sheep hear my voice. I said that earlier. I know his voice. His voice is conviction and love and and. and forgiveness and he picks you up out of the dirt out of the miry clay and then he brings you back and he dusts the, the the dirt off your butt and gets you back into the game and satan just says you suck and you're a big poser dirt bag and just go kill yourself that's kind of the game satan plays and so you gotta you gotta really it's why it's important to be a, stu- a student of scripture so that you know god's voice that's why jesus said my sheep hear my voice you got to know the difference between his voice, Satan's voice, the voice of your flesh, and the voice of the world. And the better you get at discerning those, uh, the better your life will go. That's a pretty good little mini sermon, huh, Linton? Can I get an amen? All right, here we go. I got to bring the radio back up. before you and understands things that you never even thought of if you come to them like that and then you share them with them what jesus promised yeah. they are very open you can hear more thanks at familyminute.org <laughs> hey alan If you've ever wondered why I use a decent amount of secular music in my bump music here on the Steve Noble Show, email me. As a matter of fact, you can email me about anything. And if you wanted to chime in, share some things about the past, the show, whatever, just send me an email, steve at thestevenobleshow.com. That's the email address, steve at thestevenobleshow.com. Uh, and I've had a few of those conversations over the years, and and uh, I can't believe you play Rush on a Christian radio show. I'm like, mm-hmm. See, you just figured out what I'm up to. I'm drawing you out because that's one of the things I do uh, is and, and then I need to be drawn out myself. Right. So you got to have people around you that love you and care, uh, care about you and, and will speak truth into you and will support you no matter what. And uh, one of those people happens to be uh, Bob Touchton, who's a dear friend, who's been on my board for years. And I don't know whether you're on my board or not uh, is not the main thing. I just love you as a brother and you've been such a blessing to me. Uh, and thanks for calling in, buddy. How you doing? Absolutely. I'm doing great. I'm on the road and uh, looking forward to chatting with you for a few minutes. Well, let's not get all sappy here. <laughs> There's little hope that we won't shed a tear <laughs> or two over the next few minutes. Yes. Uh, just so everybody knows, Bob Touchton has been a guy in my life over the years as we've gone through some challenges in the Noble family and in my own life that uh, I know uh, always has my back. And is always encouraging and always knows the right thing to say at the right time in no uncertain terms. Bob and I, uh, even though he's a Bob Jones guy, he's very capable of, of being blunt in a way that you will not misunderstand what he's getting at. And as we uh, have had grandchildren and, and dealt with some of the things around that, uh, man, God has just used you in so many ways to bless me. So I love you and I, and I appreciate that. I always have. Well, you know that, I, that I'm not going to let this opportunity go by without saying uh, for for I know I speak for all in your audience that there's nothing more precious to us than our children, mm. and uh, you know the circumstance about which I'm speaking. Um, you came into my life at a uh, at a time when my daughter was making a decision to leave her small, very protected Christian school and going into a uh, public school, and her dad was petrified, and uh, we had coffee at Sola and and that uh, that moment in my life where you were able to speak truth and not only that I think this is the part that I want your audience to hear just your sweetness of making making a connection with our mutual friend trainer right by area yeah. and how that led to my daughter really blossoming uh, in her faith at an institution uh, that was outside of our comfort zone is something uh, that I literally will never be able to thank you enough for. Mm. I love you and thank you so much for that. And I wanted your audience to hear, you know, you're Steve Noble on the show, 
but the amount of time and attention you give to the lives of other people and you use your connections to to help meet the needs of people is just incredible. So I've wanted to say that for a long time, and now hmm. I get to say it in, in a public forum. <laughs> and that, and that, I would say that's been one of the greatest joys. Thank you, of course, for all of that. <clears throat> that's been one of the greatest joys of, the, uh, of all these years that I've been doing stuff starting in 2004. And that's the beauty of the radio platform, which I'm going to go through a bunch of things here in a second, is that, is that it, give, it opens doors. Uh, and that's great, but if you meet people and get into situations, you don't do anything with that. I mean, what was the point? You got a T-shirt, you got to take a picture with somebody, whatever, and uh, and and just to watch what God has done with with something. You know, I've always struggled thinking that this was not a big deal, and hardly anybody listens, and I don't know what the Lord's doing with this stuff, but but He does, and it's been crazy time and time again, and 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 I look forward to heaven one day. Uh, to see all the ripples that God threw in the pond and that he did it. And the fact that we people like us got to be involved just continues to shock me. Amen. That's true. That's true. All right, buddy. Drive safe. I love you. Thank you for calling. Thank you for being Bye. my friend. And Merry Christmas. Love you, too. Remind everybody you're not going away. You're just going to a different place. That's right. Exactly right. Thank you for that. I'll make sure I do that. All right, pal. Thanks for calling. I love you. Love you brother. All right. Talk to you later. Love you, too. Uh, right. The podcast launches the last Friday in January. I'll do it every week on Fridays. But the beautiful thing about having the studio in my house is if something happens and I want to do a podcast on a t- Tuesday night at 10 p.m., I can. Go down in the basement. I, I, my, my bride will be able to sleep two floors above me, and it'll be fine. Okay, so I just started digging through old shows. Uh, and, and just to go through this list, and, and I'm just going to r- rifle through this stuff. I just want you to uh, just be amazed, uh, not at me, not at the radio show, but at, at the Lord. Be amazed at what God – I'm just a, this little schmuck, all right? And, and just be amazed what God can do with your yes. There's nothing special about me. The only thing special about me is my savior. And then, and then just throwing yourself out there. So, okay, Lord, I don't know what you're doing here, but I'm in. Just give him your yes. And, and your yes can be just as significant as mine. It's not, it doesn't need to be as noticeable. It doesn't even need to be public. But it's significant. And it's amazing what God can do. So let me just blast through this, okay? Just hang on because this is wild. All right, these are going to be ministries and people going back to February of 2011 uh, that have been on the show, okay, that have, that it's not mine, it's, it's God, so it's his platform. Uh, Converting Hearts, great ministry. Dr. Dobson was my first live guest after I started on the on the daily side in February of 2011, followed by Henry Blackaby. It was a pretty good start. Uh, Christian Life Home, great ministry. Hope Reigns, Soul Surfer, the movie, remember that one? Fixed Point Foundation, Larry Taunton, which is great. Uh, New Life Camp here in town. I did a thing in April of 2011 on the Screw Tape Letters, which I would like to do again on uh, on the podcast where I would focus on the family, did this incredible drama using Andy Serkis, who played Gollum and a bunch of other people playing screw tape. So I, I would play one. And then I had about 10 or 11 uh, minutes of commentary on top of that. That was a blast. Uh, the day that the, the next day after bin Laden was killed, which was May 2nd, 2011, uh, David Wheaton from the Christian worldview, 60 feet, a great ministry indoctrination, which was a great uh, documentary about public schools. Uh, I went to the Joel Osteen dog and pony show and did a show on it a couple days later. That was July 19th of 2011. He was here in town. Christian Library International, God Behaving Badly, which is a great book that I read in seminary, had the author on. Durham Rescue Mission, uh, Hannah Shaheen, who has a book uh, called My Enemy, My Brother, uh, former Muslim. That was powerful. Richard Blackaby, Governor Rick Perry, uh, Steve Schreibner. You're like, who's that? He was supposed to pilot the, the plane on 9-11 that hit the North Tower, but he didn't. And, and <laughs> that was a crazy story. Uh, Lynn Cowell from Proverbs tw- uh, 31. We did a show on teen dating, a teen dating book she had written. Capital Commission, my dear friends there with Jim Young. And when I tell you pray1tim2.org, that's Capital Commission. Dr. Jimmy D. Young from Prophecy Today. That was awesome. I forgot about that. Tons of local businesses. I had forgotten how many times we've had local businesses on. Because I used to say that the body of Christ should be a lot more like the mafia. Not the murder and mayhem part. But the part where we're really good at taking care of our own. So when, like I just was at Bayo's Books and Brews recently here in Raleigh. Because I'm like, why? We need to help each other. 
right? And so up just I kept running into that, all these local businesses in Raleigh. Uh, with love from Jesus, of course, Dan Forrest, who called in. Uh, Bob Wheland, who, who uh, w- walked across uh, of America on his hands, lost most of his legs, and walked literally walked across the country on his hands. Jeff Myers from Summit Ministries, of course, our friends at Iron Academy, very first time Alan was on the show, February 28, 2012. You believe that? C12, that uh, Mr. Dixon, Mr. and Mrs. Dixon. October Baby, that's when my relationship with the uh, Irwin brothers started, John and Andy Irwin, the filmmakers. That was March 21st, 2012. Of course, Greg Laurie, and I worked with him for years, had Dan Cathy on. Now, this is funny. Dan Cathy was the CEO of Chick-fil-A. He was on the show on June 19th, 2012. The very next day, he spoke at a local church, said something about uh, traditional marriage versus gay marriage. And that's when that all blew up. And then we had with Huckabee, remember this, like like within a month, uh, the Chick-fil-A day all across America. Remember that? Well, Dan Cathy sat in my studio for an hour the day before all that blew up. He was a blast. Ken Ham from Answers in Genesis. David Jeremiah has been on several times. Alan Chambers from Exodus International. Do any of you remember Todd Stiefel? Todd Stiefel is one of the biggest atheist activists in America, happens to listen here. I did six or seven shows with him, including one when he was the guest host. I let let an atheist activist guest host the Steve Noble Show on Christian radio. And he had a bunch of his atheist friends call in and pepper me with questions. I did like six or seven shows with Todd. Who, who's the, who's a friend? J.D. Greer, who was just on his first show, 12-12-2012. You want to play numerology? Go ahead. Uh, if you have a heart for the poor, you need to read the book, When Helping Hurts. Brian Fickert was the co-author, had him on. Nick, Nick Ripken, who's got a crazy life, crazy evangelists and Muslims all over the world. Uh, Bloodwater Mission. I don't know. Alan, you might remember these guys. Bloodwater Mission with Jars of Clay. Remember Jars of Clay? I had them in the studio twice when they would come in and perform. That's when you know you're dealing with professionals, how talented these people are. When they're in the studio and it's you're just sitting there going, whoa, this is crazy. Uh, Senator Jim DeMint, uh, Pastor Stephen Davey from Colonial, which is now Shepherds. Uh, I did a bunch of shows with Harvest from NASCAR down in Charlotte and with Michael McDowell, who was uh, driving the number 98. K-Love Carr, that was a blast. Christopher Yuan, who's one of the greatest voices in America on the homosexual issue. He left that lifestyle himself. The 10th Avenue North guys, uh, National Christian Foundation. I did a show uh, from their headquarters in Atlanta. Jack Graham, Pastor Jack Graham, Alex McFarland, and Graham Lotz. In one week, I had uh, Ann Graham Lotz on. Uh, I'll get to that. It was crazy. It was like one week. I'm like, are you kidding me? There's a bunch more to go. And we'll be right back. We live in an on-demand world. Time, weather, meals, and content. That's why the Truth Network has the Truth Podcast Network. So, yeah, there was that one week. Let me find it. It was crazy. Oh, yeah. In one, in one week. It was the week of October 28th, 2013. Anne Graham Lotz was on Monday. J.D. Greer was on Wednesday. And Jars of Clay was in the studio on Friday. That was stinking cool. So there's a bunch more here. I'll get through those. And then and then we're in the last segment. And then I got to get through my thank yous. I'll try to tell the first show story before I run out of time. And uh, And then I got my thank you list. Bring back Jeff to produce. He was so good. That's where the black and white theme song that I did with Bishop Wooden the other day. Jeff did that. Hey, do you remember when he did a uh, he did a Christmas carol, like the, a reading of a Christmas? I can't remember which Christmas story. It was the night before Christmas and all through the house. And he did it with Oprah Winfrey and all. It was hilarious. Jeff Oliver was the producer. He was at the seminary at the time. And he, he was so creative and he just was having so much fun with the show and he would come up. We did all these little, we drop little things into the show. We, I like one of my favorite things to drop in the show back then, just a little clip, was Iron Man. And uh, an Iron Man line, Tony Stark said, is it better to be feared or respected? And I say, is it too much to ask for both? So we did that. We used to drop that little clip into the show. There was another one we did from Gladiator. And uh, he said at the beginning of the movie, when they're getting ready to uh, battle the Germanians, he said, he said something like, if you, if, if you find yourself uh, in a field with a warm sun on your face, don't, don't be alarmed. You're in Elysium and you're already dead. Okay, that was funny. And then he said, uh, hold the line, blah, blah, blah. 
what you do, what you do in life echoes in eternity. Okay, let that one sink in. The first time I heard that, I was like, "What you do in life echoes in eternity," and that's true. And you need to live your life that way as much as you can. What you do in life echoes in eternity. And God will allow you to hear all those echoes. You'll have all the time anybody could ever have. And every little act of faith, when you've touched people's lives and served, known or unknown, that all echoes in eternity. And and those ripples that go all around the world, because God takes that stuff and does a gazillion things on a gazillion different levels, and you're we're clueless. But one day, it's my hope in heaven. He's going to show you what he was doing. Let me show you what I did with your mustard seed. Isn't that awesome? I love that. All right, one to go. I mentioned hope reigns, I think, already, Alan, on several times. So I'll keep cooking through this list. Uh, and then some thank yous, a blessing. See if I can squeeze the first show thing in here. That was hilarious. And then we'll wrap it up. Just the radio show, not the podcast. Podcasts. We'll be back, God willing, at the end of January. And every week at that point, just not live. You just won't have this. Well, that's okay. We got all eternity to do that, right? Nothing's more important whether you know Christ or not. Are you born again, as Jesus said to Nicodemus? Are you saved? Believe in your heart, Jesus rose from the dead. Confess with your mouth, he's Lord, and you will be saved. It's a biblical word. It's not a Southern Baptist word. Okay, just remember that. <laughs> All right, I got to rock and roll to get through this last segment. I can feel the emotion building, but I'll let that out when I turn off the camera. Hold on. On the cross, he sought forgiveness for his persecutors. All of Paul's recorded prayers are intercessions. He instructed us to be on the alert with all perseverance and petition for Never interviewed all him. the saints. I've interviewed some of his guys. Make I'm others talk the to focus him of your prayers. You got this time. is John MacArthur, hoping you'll join me again for Portraits of Grace. All right, let me cook through some more of these. Welcome back. It's Steve Noble, the Steve Noble Show, our final radio show, but not the end of what the Lord has called me to do. So the podcast will launch at the end of January. Noble U is going to be kicking up. Uh, we had a meeting yesterday and like, give me a 10 year dream. I'm like a 10 year dream. I can't think like that. Uh, do it anyway. Bill Peterson on our board is leading that effort. And uh, I said 10 years. Okay. Uh, 10 subjects. We're teaching 10 subjects at least and, uh, and at least 10,000 students per year. Okay. That, that's the, that's the, that's the vision of Noble U. The need is enormous and I can't do both. And I don't want to do both. I want to pour as much of myself into the classroom as I can. Uh, I love you and I love talking to you, but going after them is more important. And, and we, you know that, I know that. I'm just doing some, what I can do about it, okay? So that's part of it. Uh, back in the old days, we used to put, drop little clips into the show that came from movies because I'm a big movie guy. And so I was just saying to my friends on Facebook Live, uh, one of the clips we used was from Gladiator, what you do in life echoes in eternity. Now, you need to remember that. What you do in life echoes in eternity. If you're a follower of Christ, if you're born again, if you're saved. Everything you do in the name of Jesus, every, every way you touch people and serve people and help, seen and unseen, it all echoes in eternity. And one day, I think we'll get to see all that. That'll all come back. You'll get to see it. And we'll just glorify God all the more. Oak City Academy, Pastor Levi Lusco, Coach Bill Lamb, Russell Moore with the ERLC, Pastor Mal Williams, dear brother. God's Not Dead, that was David A. Uh, White from Pure Flicks, Energized Ministries, Tony Perkins from FRC, Rochelle Christie, Operation Resolute. Hey, Joel. David Limbaugh, he was great. Uh, Representative Mark Walker, of course, Todd Starnes from Fox News, 
Louis, uh, Luke Zamperini, who is Louis Zamperini's son. Remember Unbroken, the guy from World War II in the Japanese internment camp? Remember that? That was his son, Luke Zamperini. Abdu Murray, who is a former Muslim, Senator Ted Cruz several times, Frank Turek, Mike Johnson from ADF at the time, then a representative. Now he's the Speaker of the House. Uh, Woodlawn movie, of course, the Irwins, every movie they've done. Steve Dace, our good friend, who called in the other day. Uh, Abby Austin, who is a transgender, uh, been on the BBC, uh, she interviewed me for her thing, and then I interviewed her for mine, which is great. Dallas, Joe Dallas, who's just got a great ministry, former homosexual. Donald Trump, Richard Blackaby, Randall Wallace, who did Braveheart. Eric Metaxas, George Barna, Joel Rosenberg. Caleb Calton back, a, a book you need to read, Messy Grace. Pastor Chad Harvey, of course, Pastor Patrick Wooden, Representative Matthew Winslow, a dear friend, Lieutenant, uh, Lieutenant Governor Mark Robinson, uh, Victor Marks. Uh, Preston Sprinkle, who's a great author. Clarence Henderson, who's a civil rights hero. Rudy Giuliani, that was funny. Eric Trump, Laura Trump, Herschel Walker, Pastor Andy Davis, First Baptist Durham, Charlie Kirk, Turning Point USA, Abby Johnson, that's who Unplanned was about. Bodie Bauckham, David Platt, Dave, uh, Dallas Jenkins from Chosen. Carrie Solomon and Chuck Councilman, who did Unplanned as well as Nefarious. Dr. Anthony Levitino, that was, I'll never forget that. Former abortionist got saved, killed 20,000 babies. Walt Heyer who went down the transition road and came back. Willie Robertson, Duck Dynasty. I think the most special one was probably my dad about five years ago, about two months before he passed. That was special, to say the least. So yeah, God's done a lot. All right, so let me uh, work through these. Uh, oh, let me tell you this story real quick. First day of Call to Action Radio, okay? November 7, 2007, I got to the studio. We had a, I had a door into the studio and then two different rooms. And the room where I would go in and do the show was locked. Nobody had a key. And so I'm searching through the building. I find a step ladder. Time is, we're running out of time. This is on a Saturday. And, you know, me, former house painter guy, I'm good with ladders. It used to be. And so I found a step ladder. I put the step ladder up in front of the door. There's a drop ceiling. I, I pull the ceiling out above in front of the door. Okay. I got to get rid of the drop ceiling because I'm thinking I'm going to go up and over the seven foot door up into the ceiling and drop down on the other side. And then I had to bust the ceiling tile on the other side. And then I literally crawled up and over. This was a long time ago. I was a lot more fit and drop down about six or seven minutes before the show started. And there's ceiling tile garbage all over the place. And we finally get live and I'm, I'm all jacked up out of my mind. And uh, boom, we go live and I'm like, well, there you go. That's called to action. That's the way we do it. And I just told, I just told the story that I just told you. So that was the very first day. <laughs> and now I can't even get out of my studio on my last day because they're out in the hall replacing the carpet. So there you go. Come in in an interesting way, go out in an interesting way. Okay, I need to get through this list of thank yous, which is not going to be easy. Uh, number one, of course, is the Lord. I mean, none of this happens without him. Uh, number two, my wife, Gina, which I'll get back to. Number three, my kids. I, being my kids for the last 20 years as an activist and radio stuff has not been easy. When your dad's swimming in the culture war all the time and, and I'm kind of jacked up all the time. and But they love me and they've been calling me and sending me messages today. So encouraging. <sighs> Go nowhere without that. The Lord, my wife, and my kids. And then my board, Bob called in, Don Leshnock, Sharon Andrews, Chad Slotta, Bill Peterson, Jay Easterling. And the OG, Sarah Harden, who was there from the start, who has just been a rock. Uh, in my shoe, <laughs> but just a dear sister, just along the whole time, taking notes about everything and the Struix and Pastor Wooden and Jim Anthony and Bill Estini, all these other people. Of course, the Epperson's it wasn't my idea to get on the radio. That was little Stu and big Stu. And when the Epperson's tell you, you should be on the radio. You're like, okay, thanks. Uh, but they meant it. They saw some, I didn't see it. They saw it. My interns over the years, of course, Josh, who's not here today. Thanks, Josh. <laughs> Seth before him, Evan before him, Callan before him, Hayden, our son, our oldest out in San Francisco, produced for three years. I'll never forget that. <laughs> what a blessing. Jeff Oliver, who's the reincarnation of uh, the Prince of Pastors. And if you don't know who that is, look it up. And of course, everybody at Truth Radio, where I've been a, a pain in the rear end, uh, Mike, 
<laughs> I love you and appreciate you. I know I've been a pain. God's used it all, I think. Robbie Dillmore, I love you, man. And uh, my friends at B Bob Jones University, of course, with Theology Thursday before them, everybody at <clears throat> Southeastern Baptist Theological Seminary, especially Danny Aiken. I did the radio show Theology Thursday with him once a month for like five years. Brilliant, funny brother. Oh, my goodness. I, I, I know you think I'm teaching in here, and I do a lot, but I learn a lot, too. It's been like this great system. Uh, Beth and Doc Moranville. Doc's been in radio forever. He was really the only person that ever really seriously mentored me. North Carolina Senator Carl Ford. I was on his stations. Uh, North Carolina Representative Pastor Neil Jackson. Dave and the team at Emma's Good. Pastor Chris Connell, of course, who sat in for me many times. Pastor Chad Harvey. And Graham Lotz, who's been so encouraging to me over the years. She's done media everywhere with all the biggies. And she's like, Steve, you're my favorite. I'm like, come on, man. Bishop Wooden, of course, my siblings, Kathy, especially, who's on Facebook Live every day to have your oldest sibling pour into you like that is remarkable. Vance, my cousin. All of you guys, Facebook, I've got a different relationship with you than radio's nebulous. It's out there. I know some of you on the radio, but most I don't. But Facebook Live, I've gotten to know all of you. It's been such a cool blessing to have that extra level of friendship and brotherhood and rumble as well. And then back to Gina. She's been through a lot. I've put her through a lot. And it's like the Lord, right? I'll never leave you, never forsake you. And I'm not the easiest guy to be married to and or to be heavy as your dad. But she's always there. Couldn't do any of this stuff without her. Pray for her, you know, because of who her husband is. <laughs> and then, of course, you. I, I, I listened to Rush Limbaugh for years. And he talked about this relationship and how the audience made him feel and that stuff. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, you've you got 20 million listeners a week. But it, it, whether you have 20 million or 2,000, whatever. Uh, listen, it's, it's, it's a mind bender to know that there's a significant number of people out there that want to hear what you have to say. That's a mind bender to me. And, and I'm like, I know myself better than any of you do. The only one that fully knows me is the Lord. I'm fully known and fully loved by him, but nobody else, nobody else can fully know. But, but based on what you do know, the fact that you've plugged in as often as you have downloaded as often as you have watched as often as you have. I mean, I, I literally come in here, five days a week. And I'm like, I, I got, I'm doing what he's called me to do. I'm using what he's given me to use, but it's really, I, and that's my prayer. Sometimes all the stuff that's of me, Lord, please just fry it, get rid of it. Everything that's of you, everything that's true, multiply it. And he has, he has, it's been incredible. Some other people out there that I don't want to get into the details, but Cliff and Tom and Mary and Fred and Forrest, who've underwritten this financially made huge sacrifices and you wouldn't be here and if it weren't for them. And they're right there with me in expanding Noble U and going after this next generation. I hope you'll join me in that as well. The Steve Noble Show.com Noble U School.com. You can check that out. Make sure you text me, not text me. Well, you can text. Yeah. Text Steve to 66866 to get on the email list. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and to be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. That's the ironic blessing. Perhaps the greatest one that's ever been given, which is why I wanted to speak that over you. And remember, what you do in life echoes in eternity. I like what D. James Kennedy used to say. Christians should be like hurricanes. And everywhere you go, nothing stays the same. So, friend, make sure that's true of you through the power of the Spirit. Wherever you go, nothing stays the same. I hope I've had that impact for you. This is Steve Noble on The Steve Noble Show. God willing, I'll talk to you again real soon. And like my dad always used to say, ever forward. Okay. All right, uh, I'm just going to go kind of lose it. Ben, I, I'd like to stay around, but 
I need to just kind of let go for a little bit. We'll do it again though. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll email something out after the first of the year. Tasha, I, I like your idea. I can come on and do a Facebook live. We can do this uh, whenever we want and we will. Okay. All right. Father God, we thank you and praise you for everything you've done and are doing in my life and the life of this ministry and all of my friends here. Lord, just take us and ring us out for your glory, for your glory and your glory alone. Help us all to be hurricanes wherever we go, whatever we do. And help us to love you and love others well. And to do it all in the name of Jesus. And we ask all that in your name. Amen. All right, King. Thanks. See ya. Merry Christmas.